Hey guys, it's uh, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker. I just wanted to go over the Vim 3 Retro Arena build a little bit in greater detail and show you guys what I've been working on. Um, first thing is I've actually got it booting from an external drive now, so it doesn't matter the uh, whether you get a 16 or 32 gigabyte eMMC in the sense that your ROMs can be loaded from an external storage device. Now you can see that little bit of um, stuff on the bottom corner of the screen there. That's actually caused because I, I use the remote control for the TV too close to the Vim 3 and the sensor picks that up. Hello? Um, before an actual release I'll have it set up so that if that happens it clears whatever's in the background. I'm not going to go too far into this game, I just wanted to show you guys that it booted and worked. So there's 3DO. Uh, 3DS is not ready yet. I am working on it. I don't know if I have any Amiga ROMs. I might. I do. I've already got over a hundred systems on here. I've tested about two-thirds of them so far. Um, only a couple haven't worked or have had issues I've had to resolve, so I've been pretty lucky in that sense. As you can see, Amiga works fine. Except for when you exit it, apparently it makes that noise, but that's only on clothes, so it's not relevant. I don't think I have any Amiga CD-ROMs. No, I don't. Arcade. Okay, so this will be a generic folder for both MAME and Final Burn Neo. Um, but also, obviously, you can use just the MAME or Final Burn Neo folder. Also, one more bug that I haven't sorted yet is you would need to use the keyboard to enter this menu to change the emulators. The controller works perfectly fine in Emulation Station and in the games, but for some reason, um, when you want to change just the emulator that's loading or being used, you'll need a keyboard. I will fix it, but that's not really a huge deal since you only need a keyboard for your initial setup in that case. I'm showing this game because on the Odroid N2 and a lot of previous devices that it's been tried on, it's been a little bit laggy or hasn't worked properly. So we're going to take a look at this here for the first time together. I have high hopes, though. I will note that Killer Instinct is a little bit laggy, but it's not horrible as it used to be. It's still a bit choppy for sure. But is almost playable. And yeah, this isn't laggy at all, so Death Smiles is definitely playable. I was going to exit, but I'll get into the game first a little bit just to make sure that it actually plays in-game. Sorry, I definitely playable. Keep in mind, this is a very early, early, very, like, rough build. I haven't shared it with anybody. I'm the only dev working on it. So it'll take a little bit of time, but it, it's coming along nicely considering it's only been about a week, and this is what I've come back with in one week. I see a lot of potential in this board, and I'll definitely be working very hard to improve it.
I don't know how deep I gotta go with the Ataris. I mean, they're pretty standard. They run on everything, so I think we'll just skip by those because there's no there's no Atari issues on almost any SBC that I know of. Uh, I mean, I can do Jaguar quick. It does work, but I'm not sure anybody will care because most people only want to play two Jaguar games. But I personally like Jaguar a lot, so. A little bit choppy audio, so I just gotta look into that. But uh, it does boot and does play. Uh, Lynx is very easy to emulate, it's very standard. Commodore 64. I don't know if I have the BIOS set up, we'll find out. so many things I don't remember which BIOS is actually in the folder and which ones I still have to place so if something doesn't work it's probably because I don't have the BIOS there Daphne is like I said in a previous video it's not working yet um, it does boot it just kind of freezes so it's got to be adjusted Dreamcast Naomi Atmoswave those are working fine I'll just do a brief intro from the video here so you guys can see Shoutouts to them. They do a lot of hard work for the Dreamcast community. So yeah, there's Saturn, as you, Saturn sorry, Dreamcast, as you can see. Um, I'm not going to go too into the family computer stuff because it's very basic to emulate and it works on almost every device ever tried on. I'll show you a quick boot up, but that's about it. <laughs> This is one of my personal favorite systems, just because I used to love these handhelds when I was a kid, and the fact that it works here is beautiful. I love it. Game Gear, Game Boy, all the Game Boys are pretty standard. I'll, I'll do Game Boy Advance real quick, because I've had a lot of questions about how this works. Um, the reason I'm picking Advance is because it's the hardest of the three to emulate, so you already know going into it if Game Boy Advance works, then Game Boy and Game Boy Color will too. As you see, no lag, no no big issues. Now, we're onto the system everyone's been asking me about. <laughs> does it work? Yes, it does. It still needs a lot of work, obviously. Every game has its own individual configuration file that can be pre-configured or set up. But, it does run. Um, it's not going to run here because this emulator doesn't have... It only has sound for some reason. Um, however... I'll just show you what I mean. I can absolutely fix that. It's because of the Wayland drivers and the links being different. Um, but the actual core already works. That's just an offshoot kind of thing. Keep in mind, this isn't perfect as it's still in development, but I am working on it very hard. It's one of my top priorities as it's one of my favorite systems. That's the occasional little glitch, but... Um, not every game plays this well. Some of them are more laggy than others um, because they require custom INI files just for speed hacks and different things like that to get them to run better on different hardware. But, uh, 
we'll work on setting that up over time as I get around to testing more and more games and figuring out what works best. That'll be a bit of a lengthy process, but I am on it. Be careful. I am most concerned with the well-being of the princess in this dreadful heat. Master Mario, if you would, cross over to that shore and find some assistance. As you can see, not perfect, but absolutely playable. There's a very um, occasional bit of pause or momentary audio, but as you play GameCube more and more, it also generates its own files, so it'll sort of level itself out. That's a brute look at GameCube. I'll maybe boot another game. I don't know which game to boot. Um, I don't think it really matters. Um, like I said, not all games. We'll just go with Twilight Princess, something that's popular. Um, some games do lag a bit more than others. Um, but as we get further and further into development, we will fix that. And by we, I mean I. Also because I'm using the uh, Dolphin Core from Libretro, it works with the controller config you set up inside of Emulation Station. There's no custom stuff that needs to be done. There's the lag I was talking about. Zelda specifically can be improved with a speed hack. There's a lot of them for this particular game and the other Zelda games on the platform. As you can see, the game plays perfectly fine, there's just a little bit of choppiness in the audio. So at this point with Dolphin, it's kind of hit and miss. Some titles work amazingly well, some titles work so-so, and some just don't work quite yet. And that's where we're at with Dolphin. Um, I don't gotta go into a lot of these older consoles, they're pretty straightforward, they work everywhere. I can do more videos upon request too. I'm not quite finished yet though. I'm gonna uh, we'll go into this here. There's a video I've been really wanting to show people. Where is it? N64 disk drive or DD. There it is. Oh, I guess it auto started a game for me. Well then. Nope, that's my bad. That's a misnamed folder. Apologies. Let's just do. Let's see if the BIOS will boot, actually. I've always loved the intro video for the 64DD BIOS. If it works, you'll see why. Oh, it does! Watch the backdrop here. probably show a regular N64 game while I'm here just because. Huh, I guess, yeah, there we go. Oh, 
All right, well, apparently subfolders don't want to work. Um, a folder in a folder, so I have to move them to the main uh, main directory, but it's not really a huge deal, I don't think. Got to play something on N64. Well, that didn't go as planned. I don't remember which game is which because of the name scheme on them, to be honest. One of the notable games you will want to look out for on N64DD is the Zelda Ocarina of Time expansion pack. There we go, one of them works. So, because that took so much time just going through them, I'm not going to get too far into the 64 anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to skip it and come back to it later. Um, a lot of the rest of the systems here are pretty straightforward. Uh, PS2 is a work in progress. It does not work yet. PSP works very well. Sega Saturn is another one. Um, I haven't had any big issues here. Besides apparently pushing the wrong button on my keyboard, you know, or joystick, whatever. This game doesn't really work. I don't know why I picked it, but... There we go. Most people should be familiar with this game. It's one of the bigger titles from Saturn. This video is getting a bit on the lengthy side, so I'm not going to continue too, too much longer. I'm just going to see if there's anything else we should go over real quick while we're here. Um, Wii is a bit slow. I am working on it. There are a couple of games that work, but only a couple, so I don't want to get too much hope up yet. But uh, other than that, yeah, so right now on this particular hard drive, I've got, I think, 68 different systems going. Other than that, uh, that's about it. Anyways, once again, like always, thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Take care.